I was just there and stayed in uh, uh, Kailua. And this is like a really like- All right, Bill, you're live. I'm live, hey, everybody. Welcome to San Francisco Playhouse. Yeah. Ordinarily, we'd hear a huge cheer go up and everybody would be happy to be here and we'd all express how happy we were to be here. So I hope everybody did that. Welcome to San Francisco Playhouse. And tonight we have a full house, over 300 people here to see this wonderful little play. Uh, or I would say we have houses that are full of people who wanna to come together to enjoy this kind of crazy moment of live theater, actors that have never rehearsed a play, a director and the actors haven't necessarily even met, and the playwright, and we're throwing everybody into this wonderful little, little jumble, our Zoomlets, we call them. And tonight, we're really thrilled. We're gonna have a play called Funeral Tire by Lee Cataluna, directed by Sean Taylor Corbett. And now this is, this is actually um, the third uh, in our series of plays by in indigenous playwrights. And so we're really happy. We're gonna continue to bring you these uh, indigenous plays uh, throughout the year when we do our Zoomlets. And so this is the third. And since we're talking about indigenous people, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the Ohlone people who lived on the land where I am and who stewarded it so magnificently through so many hundreds of years and took care of it and sort of set an example about how people can live in harmony with the land and hopefully will serve as an inspiring um, example to those of us who are here now who are in charge of protecting this land. Let us do it in the spirit of the Ohlone with gratitude and um, humility. Thank you very much. Um, tonight, we'd like to, uh, so uh, we're going to do, like I said, we're going to do funeral attire. And I'd like to introduce uh, Sean Taylor Corbett, the director. Hello. And Lee Cataluna, the playwright. Won't you come into the scene here, please? Great. And I have you both. Welcome to San Francisco Playhouse. Hello. Thank you so much for having us. I don't know if ever, any of you yeah. ever, if either of you have ever been to the actual San Francisco Playhouse. Actually, no, I, I have. I, have. Um, I went to, I did my undergrad at uh, University of the Pacific in Stockton. So going to San Francisco, coming to see a play, that was a big deal. So yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Great. Very exciting okay. for me. Thank you for inviting me in my play. <laughs> and where are you, Lee? Uh, I'm in Honolulu, Hawaii, uh, land of the Kanaka Maoli, uh, born on Maui. Raised in Hawaii, live here now, um, lived in California just for undergrad, as I mentioned, and then graduate school as well. Great. And you, Sean, where are you geographically? Right now, I'm in the uh, homeland of the Lenape people in Long Island, uh, Rockville Center, New York, and we're in a huge snowstorm right now, but uh, it's nice and cozy and perfect to do this Zoom light tonight. Yeah, you got uh, a couple feet of it back there, right? It's uh, it, huge. Yeah, it's the most I've seen in a long time. I... I spent a lot of time in Oregon and California the last seven or eight years. So this is my first like snowy winter back in, in this part of the country. Oh my God. Yeah. Baptism. That's right. Back oh, in it. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the play. That'd Please. be wonderful. Um, tell us about the play. This play. Um, this play was in response to a prompt from Native Voices at the Autry. Uh, which was uh, more than moccasins. The idea was for writers to talk about some sort of a piece of indigenous native traditional attire um, and sort of, you know, see, see what sort of story would be told. Um, and so I started thinking about native Hawaiian attire, traditional, um, you know, what my people would have worn. And I started to ask myself the question, what happens when a contemporary elder breaks protocol, right? So that's the two, like you're not supposed to break protocol, but part of your protocol is you don't question an elder, right? So that's kind of where I started. Okay, that sounds a little mysterious, but we don't want to give <laughs> anything away now, do we? Sean, what's your take on the play? What's, uh, what, what, what is driving you to be willing to do this crazy little directing Zoomlet thing with it? Well, you know, um, I this is one of my favorite short plays I've honestly ever seen or read. And I think it's 
because uh, I, I won't give too much about the play away, but my family, um, you know, when my, when my grandmother passed, um, something happened in my family and the three siblings were, uh, were brought together quite suddenly. And so when I, when I read this, I just immediately went to my family and what happened and the craziness and the, I think something we all bond to as, as human beings. I, I, I feel like in this play, the humanity of what we process through life and, and death um, is like, wow, when you, when you hear and see this, you're going to immediately sense that. Um, but also just the stylistically, like I love uh, as a, as an actor myself, I love language and the speed and the music of language and how you just kind of hit a wall all of a sudden with information. And then, so she's really, I think, found something with uh, playing with language in this that I love. On top of that, the different generations, like she was saying of cultures and how we handle, well, what happens if we forgot a part of um, a ritual and we still have to do the ritual, you know? So anyway, those are some of the things that, that uh, connected me with this. And I just love these, these actors so much. Um, that it's fun to get in this room and this incredible uh, forum that you established. Uh, this is it, it, this is kind of a the Zoomlets are kind of a director driven in the sense that, like I, the artistic director, my job is to pick a play and pick a director, and then yeah. once I've done that, it's almost out of my hands in a lot of ways because the director to the director we turn over the idea of concept and style and uh, designers and what kind of a production it'll be, what style it will be in, and, and what actors uh, are gonna be chosen to be in it. Yeah. And the director does all those things. So, so tell us a little bit about, about how you came to pick these particular two actors or three actors to be in this show and who they are, introduce them. Yes, I will. Um, well, uh, briefly, I've known the three of these actors um, for a long time. We've been on the stage together. Um, we share a lot of history together. And I think that's why I, I wanted to have them do this. Um, they also are familiar with funeral attire uh, and bring a, a sense of themselves and a, a heart that is just so required for, for this piece. So let me introduce, let me introduce our magnificent actors. So, um, and I, uh, so, First, let's bring on Kalani Cuepo. Come on, uh, come on in, Kalani. Aloha. And Kalani will be playing uh, Kekoa. And um, Kalani, do you want to um, give a little introduction about where you are and just a little bit of, about yourself? Sure. Uh, I was born in Honolulu and raised there. And so I know Lee. And we actually shared a playwrights retreat together where we were both developing uh, different plays of our own a couple years ago. So that's when we first met and we've gotten to work since and get to know each other's work and we have a huge respect for each other. And um, I am currently in North Hollywood, um, home of the Gabriel and Altangva people who were the original stewards of this land. And um, I know the I know these uh, other actors that we're gonna be introduced to. Um, we've all gotten to work together with Sean and with Lee uh, with Native Voices Theater. And it's a great gathering place where uh, we, we get to work on a lot of original material by indigenous writers, and we get to be surrounded by family. Thank you, Kalani. So great to have you. Um, Roman Zaragoza, please come on screen. Hello, hello. Hi, hi, everyone. Roman will be playing Nainoa. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Roman, give us a little introduction. Uh, yeah, so um, my name is Ramon Saragosa. I was born in New York City, uh, but partially grew up in Los Angeles, California. And that's where I am right now. I am in Sherman Oaks, uh, currently at my parents' house. I'm going to leave in a week or so back to Oregon, where I live in Eugene. But I'm um, currently on the lands of the Tongva and the Tataviam. Uh, Roman and Kalani were both in a uh, uh, my musical that I co-wrote at Native Voices at the Autry, which is how... I first came into contact with them. So um, thank you for being here, Roman. And when Kalani. was it? That was like almost that was two years ago. 2012, I believe. Jeez. Roman was a lot shorter. He's very, he's taller <laughs> than I am now. Um, so uh, great to have you guys. Now, Daryl, Dennis, please come on the screen. 
Hey guys. Hello, welcome. Hey. Daryl will be playing the funeral director and very proud to have you, my friend. Can you give us a little back, uh, little introduction? Yeah, I am uh, I am originally from the uh, Sequoiam Nation. Uh, it's my indigenous uh, nation in um, British Columbia, Canada. I've been living in uh, Los Angeles for many, many years now, um, large part because of the weather. Um, but that, yes, that's the Gabrielino Tongva tribe, uh, uh, the, the land of their people. And uh, yeah, I've known uh, you guys for ages now through Native Voices, and it's great to be reunited with, uh, as Kalani said, as, as with family. Yes, thanks so much, Daryl. Um, Lee, I wanted to, uh, well, I wanted to talk to all you guys before we get started. And, uh, you know, this is a nice cold read uh, of the play. Um, that I, we're sharing with the audience. But Lee, I wanted to ask you because some of the themes that uh, really struck me and, and it's brought up a, a couple of times, if, um, if you could talk a little bit about Aloha um, and, and, that, uh, and, and just some of the different meanings of that and maybe how it's used uh, for a little background uh, for us to focus on in the, in the show. Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think uh, people are familiar with the idea of aloha having many meanings, right? Hello and goodbye and I love you. Um, but it's also that connectedness, I think, that um, is really required for life on an island. Um, you know, it's, it's been compared to uh, voyaging on a canoe, like across the ocean, right? You, you have to get along. You can't like, I'm so done with you. I'm walking off. <laughs> there's, no, there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go on the canoe. There's, there's not, not much room to maneuver on the island either. So you, you kind of have to um, look for the connections and, and have that commitment, that commitment. Yeah. Um, and e even like a what, be begrudging affection sometimes. <laughs> I mean, that's, I think that's part of a law too. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, um, I, I, I bring it up because for, for the actors, I, you know, I, I, it's brought up a few times in the show and um, I just want to think about uh, ways we can, we can build that in as we, as we read through. Um, also something else, you know, just setting up a, a few of the things I want to focus on in this first read. Um, the idea of, where we start and where we end, the idea of reconciliation and, and how uh, we can possibly get there. Um, and thinking about the musicality of, of the piece, I know uh, sometimes that's hard when we're, we're looking down and we're, we're, we're trying to act, but think about the, um, the, the musicality built in and the speed with which uh, Lee has crafted these words, um, having the comedy match the speed and then when we have those moments where we kind of hit a wall, really taking that time to, to, to process that before moving on with, uh, with the music of it. So, um, and the other thing I'll say is as it, e each wall we hit have a different layer of, of comedy or, or, or try, to, try, to, try to go deeper within the comedy so that it has that variation on, at each level. Um, there's just a few more things because it's our first read and I don't want to overload everybody, but Daryl, as the funeral director, can you, uh, can you basically be having like the worst day possible? And you've done this, like <laughs> you've had like seven other appointments and they haven't gone very well. Um, so I'll just leave you with that and slowly work your way to becoming becoming a little bit of the guidance counselor that you don't want to be um to these to these guys um and the rest i think i'm going to for this first read i'm going to let kalani and roman go for it and then we're going to uh, talk about it does that sound good bill yeah that's perfect yeah and you and i can get off the screen and lee too i think we'll leave just the actors out there okay and, and you know i'm I'm just going to read that first stage direction, everybody. And then I told you about that other stage direction and then I will be, I'll be out. Great. 
In fact, you can just be off camera and just read those. That's right. Directions. That's right. I'm not the actor. I'm not the actor right now. Not this moment. <laughs> All right, here we go. Funeral Attire by Lee Caraluna. Characters, Kekoa, man, man in his 30s. Nainoa, man in his 30s, Kekoa's half-brother. Funeral director. Kekoa and Nainoa have been called to the funeral home in preparation for their father's memorial services. They meet with the funeral director. We are, of course, so sorry for the loss of your father. You looking at him or you looking at me? He was my father, too. He was looking at both of us, stupid. I was looking at both of you, Nainoa. He's Nainoa. I'm Kekoa. We're half brothers. I understand. All you need to understand is that I'm the direct descendant. Nainoa was from my dad's girlfriend. That makes me direct, too. And your mom wasn't dad's wife, either. My mom was his girlfriend before your mom was his girlfriend, and I'm older, so I have rank. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, the grieving process often brings out feelings of unfairness or disharmony in families. But if I can offer this comfort, he was father to both of you. He had a lot of aloha, and he loved you equally. He liked me better. <laughs> no way. He liked me more. He said I looked like him. He said I looked like him. You look like his ass. You had a good-looking ass. Guys, if I can get to the point. You gonna read his will or something? I don't need nothing. He gave me his aloha. Me too. But I get his surfboard. I want his truck. You take the truck. I'm taking the horse trailer. <laughs> you take the horse trailer. I'm taking the horse. Boys, <clears throat> this is not that kind of meeting. We're not here to talk about dividing up his money. Oh, daddy didn't have money. And if he did, his <laughs> wife spent it long ago. Fake nails and figurines. And she had lots of small dogs with shiny collars. And... Oh, that's not the one he was married to. This is the one after that one. This one liked to go to Vegas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not dogs, Vegas. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a counselor. I'm the funeral director. I'm preparing your father's memorial services, and he left instructions for how he wants to be buried. <clears throat> I'll give the eulogy. I'll play ukulele at the gravesite. You sing like a chicken. You talk like a drunk. All of those details have been decided by your stepmother. She'll be returning from her uh, grief counseling retreat in Las Vegas in time for the service. She killed him, you know. Rolled right on top of him with that ass. But maybe he died smiling, so... <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that remains is a special request from your father. Whatever the old man wanted. I'm there for my pops. I would do anything for my daddy. Shave my head, knock out my front teeth, anything. He wants to be buried in a malo. Uh, you talking loincloth malo? The, the thing that wraps over his... Wow. And, and goes in between his... Wow. Wow. Yes, he wants to be buried in a mallow, and you have to dress him. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, is it a matter of unfamiliarity? I found a YouTube tutorial. It seems you pass the length of the cloth over the... Um... Wait a minute. That's not even culturally appropriate. That's not how ancient Hawaiians were buried. I've seen you eat pineapple in your pizza, so don't act like you're an expert on Hawaiians. I never eat no goddamn pineapple or no goddamn pizza. I always pick that shit off. You take that back. Oh. Please, I understand your reaction. We see all sorts of requests these days. Some combine traditional customs with new ideas of culture. This is, well, this is what he wanted. Yeah. Since when he got all Hawaiian? He was born Hawaiian, but since when he get all cultural? Oh, he was taking those cultural classes at the community center. Why do they have to make these old dudes think they're Hawaiian warriors? Why don't they just stick to how to make flower lay without flowers? Uh, if you're ready, I'll take you to him. Now? Oh, if you don't want to do it, I'll do it myself because that's my dad. Okay. Oh, I'm doing it. My father. Once he's nuts tied up in a bowl, I'm doing it. No questions. They stand 
and the funeral director leads them to their father. The funeral director hands the brothers a long piece of white cloth. I'll give you some privacy. You should think of this time with your father as special. He trusted this to you. So what? So what? Jump in. If you make a mistake, I'll let you know. No, no, no. You do the rapping. I'll flip them over when we get to the ass part. I'm stronger. You're not stronger. You're just bigger because you bloated. Fine. We'll do it together. But first, we got to take off the sheet. You take one and I'll take the other. Okay. One. Two. two three. three. That's my dad. That is definitely my father. Oh, I have that same birthmark. Me too. Right there. Oh, me too. It looks like the island of Maui rising up from my sea of growing. What is wrong with you? It's a face gazing at the strength of my manhood. <laughs> gazing and <Ooh>. laughing. <laughs> hey, 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 don't make fun. I'm your father's son too. You got as much of him in you that I have in me. So you ever did this before? Only on myself and only for Hula, like in the fifth grade. Me too. It's easy to rap when, you, when you're young and you don't have that much to cover. Mm. Okay. You take the end part and put it up by his chest. Yep, yep. And then this goes down and covers over here by his. Got it. Got hey, it. hey, you lingering. Why what? are you lingering? No, I'm, I'm just making it straight. Uh, now it goes in between here and, and we roll him over. <laughs> oh, <laughs> daddy was beefy. Uh, now pass it in the back. <laughs> Why are you patting? Don't pat you weirdo. I don't want him to shave. Dead men, dead men don't shave. I... Ah! That's so sad. He will never shave again. Oh man, his chafing days are over. Our father is gone. He was a good dad. Not so great to our moms, but you know, he loved us kids. He never hurt nobody. He just had a lot of aloha. A whole lot of aloha to go around. Okay. Let's do this. <laughs> Pass it here. Now, okay, you, you do the over under. I, I think it should be under over. You do it like that, that thing will fall off. It's not like he's going to be walking around. <sighs> That's too much. Yeah. I no can handle. Oh, I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I. I don't even want the horse trailer or the horse. I just want my dad. You're the closest relative I have now. You're like a brother to me. Stupid. I am your brother. Yeah, but you never acted like it. Neither did you. You know, this is why you made us do this, right? That whole bonding thing we never got right. Yeah. Freaking community center cultural classes. They should stick to basic hula and microwave kulolo. This stuff is hard. Hey, I'll let you ride my horse if you let me borrow your horse trailer. Deal. But that surfboard is mine. Okay. Now make sure the flaps are even, front and back. That's my dad. That's our dad. Alfada looks like a warrior. Pao, the end. Wonderful, you guys. So wonderful. Uh, Lee, do you want to come on for a second? I just want to include everybody on camera. <laughs> um, Thank you so much. I, 
you know, I got, I got so caught up in, um, you know, when, when, when you start realizing that your father did this so that you, uh, come together and you're forced to come together, it just, uh, it, it really hits me, you know, and I think, um, well, first of all, how, how did, uh, how did you guys feel in that run? Anything new that popped up? I mean, I, ideas? if I may go first, I, you know, it's beautifully written and, you know, there's, there's so much, um, you know, when you deal with death, there, there's such a myriad of, of, um, feelings and emotions that happen and oftentimes anger, um, you know, towards the deceased person, you know, the one who passed and, and the people who are around you. And then there's also this idea of like where that safe place is. And it's, it's so brilliant because it's in this cold, trying to be warm kind of place. And it's, a, it's in a place where strangers are trying to comfort you, you know, and, yeah. and there, there's just so many layers that are happening here. And but at the heart of it, you get to get this this comedy because that's one of the things right like we laugh through our tears and you get to experience uh these two brothers who have identity issues who have um acceptance issues and who are who are mad at the world you know that made um made them who they are and then we have it with this culturally specific lens. And I, I just think it, it moves really fast and you discover a lot and there's something that's so relatable, you know, mm -hmm. um, that, that, you know, I, I understand the culture, I, I, I am from it. And, and, and yet I think there's this universal um, message that, that, yes. um, that we can relate to. Yeah, so I felt that too. Really beautiful writing, beautiful. Yeah, Lee, it's so it's so wonderful, and I I was telling Lee before that I think it should be a full length play, and I feel like this is one of the pinnacle moments of the play, you know, for the full length when they come together, um, because I think so many of our families uh, want us to have that reconciliation that sometimes we never get until they're literally passing on, uh, and that's kind of what happened with my what I was telling you before about my family and my, my grandma passed and I didn't give the details, but she, she basically left uh, her house in, in all three of their names, all three of the siblings names. And they all did not, did not like each other per se. <laughs> and so they were forced to come into this room. And, and this is what I feel like, um, you know, their father has done and uh, it's what happens, you know, like you were saying, Kalani, all that, that experience that families have of, it's like one of the things that the, the trickiest things to play, which you guys capture really well, I think is you, you have to fight so hard. Obviously you love each other, but you have to fight so hard to show that you are not trying to love each other. But then you have those moments of levity where you talk about the, you, you know, each other so well, you know, your father's girlfriends and oh, not that one, the other one. And then you have like a few laughs about it, even when you're in this really vulnerable place, looking at your father and you, you have that birthmark and you're both saying, you know, well, no, mine is this and mine's that. And you're like, well, my, we have the same father. So obviously if you're making fun of me, you're making fun of yourself, you know, like it's so great. And, uh, and so raw. And you're like, wow, what would we do if we were in that situation? And we get to see it with you two and how you handle it. Um, Ramon, do you, how, how did you, uh, any thoughts um, on this read or anything? Yeah, you honestly, again, this, I love this play so much. I, um, one of the biggest things that I really felt this last time was feeling the commentary on masculinity and men and how men deal with emotion and how they deal with especially loss. It's, it's so hard to talk about the real things and they can't really just say, Hey, I'm hurting. I'm sad. It's like, screw you, screw you. You suck. Like it's, 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 that's, that's how men are because they don't know how to process emotions. Sometimes it just comes out in anger. And uh, I don't leave you just beautifully write it in such a, 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 just a very real way. And it's so real. And um, yeah, I, I, you know, I've, I, I, of course, we've all had to deal with loss, but definitely had to deal with loss, especially with friends. And yeah, it's hard to talk about these tough things, especially with with 
with my guy friends or I imagine with brothers, same thing. So yeah, it's powerful. Daryl, uh, did you have something uh, you want to share or? Yeah, I, uh, I mean, yes, those, those themes of, uh, are, are incredibly universal. It, just the idea of, you know, how do men become men when, they're, when their fathers weren't around? You know, how do they define themselves as men? And, and as we see, these men in this play here uh, do it by, you know, I guess what you call that toxic masculinity or whatever, you know? So they're always like, shut up, you know, that, that version of without having, without really understanding what it means to be a man. But one thing that really leapt out at me this time, for some reason, I don't know why it didn't before, was just the idea of um, not only, you know, men having to deal with becoming a man without a man in their life, but also when you come from a culture where men are considered warriors, you know, traditionally and historically, the idea, not only do you have to become a man, but you have to become a warrior. You know, you're expected to be a warrior, even though you may not know what that means because you, you may not have connection to, you know, to to your history or to your ancestors in that regard. So uh, that really struck me as well, too, because, uh, um, you know, my, my father was very much involved in, in those sort of warrior act, what you call modern day warrior activities. He was involved in the American Indian movement very heavily and stuff. So when he passed, there was this huge legacy uh, you know, that people expect you to follow behind and you become a warrior now. It's like, well, what does that mean? Because I also, you know, uh, I, I had very little contact with them as well too, you know? So those, those, those themes really stuck out of me uh, quite heavily on this one. Thanks, Dale. And, and Lee, you know, uh, did you, you know, I know this is your play. So, but uh, if you had any, please share if you, you know, jump right in, if you had something, um, any other observations about the read or something that you noticed or, or, you know, please share if you want, if you'd like. Well, the, the play is, is much better in these actors and in Sean, your hands than it is on the page. That's for sure. I mean, it's just words on a page, but here it's, you know, alive and it, you know, the characters have voice and they're embodied and they have thought and, and agency and yeah, it's, so thank you so much. This is, um, you know, I'm learning about it too as I'm as I'm hearing it. Um, you know, I hear it in different ways. I mean, it's a, a play. Um, you know, I'm I'm not a guy, uh, <laughs> um, but you know, I, I lost my parents, both parents, um, within the last several years, and uh, my parents were they made stuff up about the culture, and half the time I'd say that, that's not right and then I'd read something and went, oh it was right <laughs> I didn't trust them um and, and you know my sister and I kind of fought at my mom's service and and my mom had just a wild service um so this is this is really about my sister and I and and um my mom who insisted I mean she picked the food she wanted um at her at her funeral that's because Hawaii is all about food right and she like, she picked the menu for her service and she picked the band. She had a band and, mm -hmm. um, and their set list. And on their set list was um, Lay Down Sally. I do not know why, but <laughs> my mother's name was Dorothy. Uh, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, and, and it, was, it was sad. It was the, like one of the saddest days of my life and it was wild too. And I think I'm still processing it. I mean in a lot of ways, this piece is not personal to me. And in some ways it is. And I guess that's the way um, that it is. Um, I don't have any brothers. So uh, I, th I think I'm my dad's son, you know? <laughs> so maybe that's what I'm kind of messing around with in, in this piece, but, but thank you so much. I'm, I'm learning so much from it. Thanks. It reminded me, yeah, I, I've had a, uh, over the years, man, my dad and I went toe to toe on stuff and and then we always come back together and say, we, I love you. And, you know, but, but for, for a while, it's just like, I'm never talking to him again. Um, and then, you know, luckily we're, we're friends now, but um, so, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Daryl, you had a question? Yeah. I just really quick for Lee. I'm just wondering, since it is, it, you know, it's sort of based around you and your sister's uh, personal experience with your mother. I'm just curious as to why you switched it to fathers and brothers. Hmm. Um, I like to write with a little bit of distance. I think, you know, I, I do better when it's not about me per se um, when, and you know, I'm a, I'm also a journalist, right. That's um, 
I've, I've been a journalist for most of my career. Um, so I'm usually writing about other people and not writing about me and that's, so that's a little bit more comfortable. Um, but I try to put things, you know, write what you know, right? So I know the feeling. Um, mm. I know the feeling of being just so devastated and then um, there's something really funny happening going, you know, it, it, this absurd thing that, you know, laughing at a funeral, you know, I've, I've done that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's some, 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 we don't know. Sometimes we have reactions in moments that we're in. It's like, how could I be re reacting like this? But it's very human, you know, and that's another, that's another truth about this piece. Um, I wanted to, uh, I, I had a, I had a really interesting thought and I like to do this because, you know, as good as this already is and, and the, the work you guys are doing is phenomenal. Um, and I could easily see what you're doing in a, uh, taking that right to the stage, you know, in, in terms of acting, in terms of how are you playing it. But a lot of the times and something I've been doing recently is switching things up or putting ideas in there just to see what happens, to play a little bit and to see what comes out of it um, and take, uh, so let's do this again. I, I'd like to try and take the pressure off of um, any, any kind of beats that you think it has to be or uh, moments where you have to do something a certain way. And I'd like to ask if we can try something. Kalani and Roman, can we try switching characters are you guys i knew you were gonna say that I like are you guys it. down to try it because i thought with these brothers they're so close and for the characters maybe for for the actors to get into the head and the humanity of the other person and you know if we had uh, more time and whatever obviously we, we go back to your other characters but it just might be cool to to, to play with and explore is that cool you guys want to try it? Let's well, I'm do not, it. I'm not going to try doing the accent because there's no <laughs> way. <laughs> I can tell you, I'll transfer the accent over. Or there you go. Accent, there you don't go. worry what? about it. It's not about the accent. It's about your brain. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is fun. <laughs> and I guys, love this. Let's do yeah, this. It's okay to make mistakes. It's all right. This is sure. fine. You know, it's like, don't touch perfect. Daryl, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll switch characters and play the dad. <laughs> yes. I I know. Wearing pants anyway. <laughs> I actually imagine this opening up. True. True. <laughs> opening up on a spot, you know, the, the stage is is lit and it's just uh Daryl, you would be not not Daryl, sorry. Yeah, no, you'd be on stage preparing, you know, like frantically preparing. Um uh the father would be there. Uh, and and you wouldn't know what was going on, but you'd be preparing. You'd be a little flustered, and then, you know, you they would they would take you unawares, and, and you'd have to, you know, that's kind of how I see it starting. But um, why don't you try this time, Daryl? Like this is actually your first, your first time doing this. Maybe you you've just got the job, you know, um, and these are your first clients. So however you imagine that going, um, and we'll 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 go from there. Uh, you guys, you guys want to give it a shot? Let's do it. Yes. Warning, I am like a trained monkey. So if my thing is not highlighted, I don't know how well I'll come in on my views. <laughs> that's great. That's that's perfect. All the better. Cause it'll like All right. yeah, it's it's awkward. It's cool. All right. It's so cool. um I'll just read the stage. Or I'll get off screen here. And uh I'll just give you uh <clears throat> the first stage direction. All right. Here we go. Hekoa and Ainoa have been called to the funeral home in preparation for their father's memorial services. They meet with the funeral director. We are, of course, so sorry for the loss of your father. Looking at him or you're looking at me? It was my father too. Uh, he was looking at both of us, stupid. I was looking at both of you, Nainoa. He's Nainoa, I'm Kekoa, we're half brothers. I understand. All you need to understand is that I'm the direct descendant. Nainoa was from my dad's girlfriend. That makes me direct too. And, and, and your mom wasn't dad's wife either. My mom was his girlfriend before. Your mom was his girlfriend. And I'm older, so I have rank. Uh, gentlemen, the grieving process often brings out feelings of unfairness or disharmony in families. 
but I can offer this comfort. He was father to both of you. He had a lot of aloha, and he loved you equally. You like me better. No way. He liked me more. He said I looked like him. He said I look like him. You look oh, like his no. ass. You look like ah. Where am I? <laughs> you look like his ass. You. He had a good looking ass. Uh, guys, um, if I can get to the point. You gonna read his will or something? I don't need nothing. He gave me his aloha. And me too. But I get his surfboard. I want his truck. You take the truck. I'm taking the horse trailer. You. Take the horse trailer. I'm taking the horse. This is not that kind of meeting. We're not here to talk about dividing up his money. <laughs> oh, daddy didn't have money. <laughs> and if he did, his wife spent it a long ago. Fake nails and figurines. She had lots of small dogs with shiny collars. No, 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 that's not the one he married to. This is the one after that one. This one liked to go to Vegas. Oh, yeah, not dogs, Vegas. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a counselor. I'm the funeral director. I'm preparing your father's memorial services, and he left instructions for how he wanted to be buried. I'll give the eulogy. I'll play ukulele at the gravesite. You sing like a chicken. You talk like a drunk. All those details have been decided by your stepmother. She'll be returning from her... Um, grief counseling retreat in Las Vegas in time for the service. She killed him. Yeah. <laughs> Rolled right on top of him with that ass. <laughs> but maybe he died smiling, so. <laughs> the one thing that remains is a special request from your father. Whatever the old man wanted. I am there for my pops. I would do anything for my daddy. Shave my head, knock my teeth out, anything. He wants to be buried in a malo. You're talking loincloth, malo? That thing that wraps over his... Wow. And goes in between his... Wow. Okay. Yes, he wants to be buried in a malo, and you have to dress him. <laughs> no! No, 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 no. No. Well, is it a matter of unfamiliarity? I, I found a YouTube tutorial. Now, it, it seems you passed the length of the cloth. Wait, 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 wait a minute. That's not even culturally accurate. Uh, uh, culturally appropriate. That's not how ancient Hawaiians were buried. I've seen you eat pineapple on your pizza, so don't act like you're an expert on Hawaiians. I never ate no goddamn pizza, uh, no goddamn pineapple on no goddamn pizza. I would pick that shit off. You take that back. I, uh, please, I understand your reaction. We see all sorts of requests these days. Some combine traditional customs with new ideas of culture, but that is, well, it is what he wanted. Since when he get all Hawaiian? He was born Hawaiian, but since when he got all cultural? He was taking those cultural classes at the community center. Why do they have to make these old dudes think they're Hawaiian warriors? Why don't they just stick to how to make flower lay without flowers? But if you're ready, I'll take you to him. Now? If you don't want to do it, I'll do it myself because that's my dad. Oh, 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 I'm doing it. My father wants his nuts tied up in a bow. I'm doing it. No questions. They stand and the funeral director leads them to their father. The funeral director hands the brothers a long piece of white cloth. I'll give you some privacy. You, you should think of this time with your father as special. He trusted this to you. So what? So what? Jump in. If you make a mistake, I'll let you know. Nah, uh, you do the rapping. I I'll flip him over when you get to the ass part. I'm stronger. You're not stronger. You're just bigger because you're bloated. Fine. We'll do it together. But first, we got to take off the sheet. You take one end, I'll take the other. Okay. One. One. Two. Two. Three. three. That's my dad. That is definitely my father. <laughs> Whoa, I have that same birthmark. Me too. Yeah, right there. 
Me too. It looks like the island of Maui rising from the sea of my groin. <laughs> what is wrong with you? It's a face gazing at the strength of my manhood gazing and laughing hey no make fun i'm your father's son too you got as much of him in you that i have in me mm. so you ever did this before only on myself and 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 only for hula like in the fifth grade me too it's easy to rap when you're young you don't have much to cover okay we we take the end pot and 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 put it up by his chest. Yep, yep. And then this goes and covers over his. Got it, got it. Hey, hey, hey! You're lingering. Why are you lingering? I I, I I'm just making it straight now. It it goes in between here yeah, and 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 we roll him over. Oh, daddy was beefy. Now. P pass it to the back. Hey, why are you patting? Don't pat, you weirdo. I, I, I don't want him to chafe. Dead men don't chafe. That's so sad. He will never chafe again. Oh, man. His chafing days are over. My father is gone. He was a good dad. Not so great to our moms, but but he loved us kids. He never hurt anybody. He still had a lot of aloha. A whole lot of aloha to go around. Okay, let's do this. I pass it here. Now you do the over under. I think I should do um under over. You do it like that, the thing will fall off. Not like he's going to be walking around. That's too much. I can't. I can't handle. I. I know. I. I know. I. I'm sorry. I don't even want the horse trailer or the horse. I just want my dad. You're like the closest relative I have now. You're like a brother to me. Stupid! I am your brother. Yeah. Yeah. But. You never acted like it. Neither did you. You know, this is why he made us do this, right? This whole bonding thing we never got, right? Yeah. Freaking community center cultural classes. They should stick the basic hula and microwave kololo. This stuff is hard. Hey, I'll let you ride my horse if you you let me borrow your horse trailer. Ew. But that surfboard is mine. Okay, okay, okay. Now, make sure the flaps are even, front and back. That's my dad. That's our dad. Our father looks like a warrior. Yeah. Wow, the end. Wonderful work, guys. Oh, that was so beautiful. Um, <clears throat> you know, I saw um, different sides. It's cool. I saw different sides of uh, the actors, you know, you you two, uh, Kalani and Roman and Daryl also in, in your different take on it. But when you guys switched, um, I saw other colors of the actors and then also... Um, different moments of caring. So you instinctively had um, moments of caring before that were very beautiful. But then when you switched, uh, you both, I, I just sensed the different choices. And it was cool to see that, you know, and um, also just a wonderful job doing that on the fly. That's not easy, everybody. Uh, and these two made it look easy. That was just great work. Um, what you want to want to talk a little bit about the experience? I mean, mm -hmm. I love the beats and the moments. You t I, th I thought you guys took maybe a little bit more time in certain moments because you had to, because you were, you know what I mean? So just, yeah, if, if you talk a little bit about what that experience was like for you guys. Yeah. 
Um, well, I think I, I think this is such a great exercise because you're taking material that you've really been working on, and I, you know, I've heard those lines a, a, a good amount of times to the point where, like, I, I, I know the line, but then being able to say it, it, I, I, it, I doesn't feel overworked, and and for that, it, it felt so different and and raw. But even though I knew the story, I knew where we were going, but I, but also I was on my toes the whole time. And it's, it was fascinating to play Keikoa. Keikoa is like the way I felt it was, he was just like this ball of energy that was about to explode at any moment. And he's so trying to just keep everything contained and, you know, the anger and all of that is really apparent in, in, in Keikoa. And, and it's, it's emotional playing that because you know, I don't know about y'all, but I, I can definitely relate. That happens all, you know, happens. And, and um, yeah, it, it was, it was a great exercise. I, really I felt that it. shift too. I felt you do that, Ramon. And then I felt Kalani, you, you had a, um, I know I had a, a sensitive, you brought a, a more sensitive side mm-hmm. to the character. It, it was like, I, I, for me, this is only my third time hearing the words and you guys doing it. So mm-hmm. I understood the characters. It helped me understand the different aspects of each character a little bit more. What about you, Kalani? What um, what they're happened? super interesting. Um, so many thoughts are th- swirling in my mind. Um, but you know, it, it's interesting because then you want to make a strong choice, right? And so as Kekoa, I, you know, one of the things that I would like sort of do is put him in his place, you know, and sort of assert yeah. my big brotherhood, my manhood my rank as the older brother and so so i just it it clicked for me and i was just like find your place you know Mm -hmm. so i was sort of like that was sort of my shortcut on the fly was like find your place you know and find your way through this and navigate which is it, it which is electric right like for finding your way navigating your way through death and and if that's the first time you know anytime i i try to heighten things as a, as an actor, I always try it as if it's the first time, right? Mm-hmm. Like make all the circumstances. So, and here we were like doing something for the first time, you know, <laughs> because we were switching it. So it was really great. And you know what it was sort of like, I, I, I was sort of worried at first as Kalani, the actor and thinking, okay, you don't want to mess this up, dude. Like, like get on it. Right. And then I just said, let it go and listen, everything you need is already there and you've mm-hmm. got a script and you've got no pressure. So just listen to your brother, listen to this funeral director and let this be what it is. And don't worry if you feel or sound like Kikoa, you don't need to be completely different. And once I did that, it was, you know what the sensation was? It was like, you get your heart broken and then you listen to a song, you know, when the song comes on, on a playlist and you're just like, oh my God, every word and every phrase sounds different. Mm. you know it and you've known it for so long, but it sounds and feels different. That's what it was like. It was like experiencing it with a heartbreak. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was, it was a trip, man, like really oh, fantastic. Cool. Um, um, you know, especially that's just like, Oh, let's try this. It's one thing you're in a room in a rehearsal room. It's another <laughs> thing when you know that there yeah. are, there are people who have a high expectation for San Francisco Playhouse. You know, mm-hmm. there are patrons here who are just like, we expect greatness, you know? And um, so this was, it was a lot of pressure and that was fun to let it go and be like, let it be what it's going to be, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And that's what you, you guys did so great. That's what I love about doing this because um, oftentimes some of that, some of the, the moments we discover and the organic moments happen you know, when we're, when we're letting it go, like you said, let it go a little bit. And uh, obviously when we do the production, you know, we, we, we get to a certain place and we want to have flexibility, but also have a plan and a, and a path, but in the rehearsal process, that's what it's all about. And some of the best work comes from, from, from kind of breaking down the structure a little bit and, and playing. So, and Daryl, I, I saw you, uh, I saw that first time funeral director, you know, trying his best to, to hold it together and, and make sure, you know, so I, I liked what you did there. Um, one thing I forgot, I, I really wanted to tell you and I forgot is like, I thought it was so funny when he's like, 
well, you know, there's like a YouTube t- tutorial and like, as if you looked it up and you got so excited about it, you, I, it was funny. Um, <laughs> you know, like, I can't wait to share it. And, and, and you're actually trying to explain what you saw. And, and that's what's like in this day and age with technology and trying to, trying to put the pieces together of our culture and, you know, just doing the, doing the best we can. And this, that's what, that's what all three of you are doing. You know, you're trying to help them out. Um, so yeah, it was just a brilliant, brilliant job. Was it, was it fun, uh, Lee, to, to, to kind of hear that, that switcheroo? That was amazing. <laughs> that, was, that was so cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that was a, a great idea, Sean. Oh, thanks, Bill. Yeah, it was... I, I, I kind of thought you were going to do it at a certain well, point. I thought, what is he up to? <laughs> well, I, you know, it was hard for me. I wanted to like, I wanted to tell everyone beforehand, but I was like, no, let's do it in front of a live audience. I'm that would be better. Let's, let's just <laughs> let's drive them completely crazy. Yeah, <laughs> terror is it. a great motivator. You know, what's that? Terror is a great motivator. Oh yeah. That's why, oh yeah, that's, that's why I loved being an understudy for so long. You just never know. You walk on stage and you're like, what's going to happen in front of an audience? Let's see. It's, it's, yeah, funny. totally, totally. <laughs> but I thought you all did such, 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 such beautiful work. Really, really. Um, Great work, everyone. Lee, what a terrific little script. I agree. I'd love to see this get expanded. Maybe we meet some more of the family, you know, the mom at the grief counseling in Las Vegas where she's, probably doing a little bit of the one arm bandit along with it. You know, I get the impression. And then, you know, the, it's just, uh, I think it, I think it, pro- it, I would encourage you. I think it's uh, got the, got the germ of a, of a longer piece and the characters are so, so clearly and so well developed, I think already. That well, let me, I, let I think- me ask you a question then. Is this scene at the beginning of the play or at the end? What do you, what do you, what would you think? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe both, maybe, maybe both, you know, maybe you start out, maybe you start out with this moment in the beginning of it, and then you flash back to other things or something. It does sort of seem like it's the end of the story though, right? No, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe they get their horse and their horse trailer and they go into business together, you know, <laughs> and they share the surfboard. At any rate, wonderful, wonderful work, everybody. I usually like to ask uh, everybody, like, what, you know, it's interesting because it's a first rehearsal, right? And or- ordinarily, if we were doing a production of this play, we'd come back tomorrow and we'd work on it some more. So, so everybody, let's start with the actors. And uh, what would you, what would you want to work on next? What would be your, what did you feel like? Oh, yeah, I could have done that, but I didn't quite get there or... What would I do? What would I work on next? I think for me, the um, the like actually actually working with a model, and and working that uh, you know I'm I'm a huge fan of physicality, and that yeah. would be I I would love to just sort of like get in there and because that really does inform you know like is he in a casket? Is he on a table? You know, I would want to ask all these questions, but I would really want to get in there and be like, what does that really mean? And how does that feel to, 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 to make this happen on, you know, on your father's expired corpse? You know, it's, uh, um, I just, I love the juxtaposition of the humor and the drama of it. And to me, that's so interesting. You know, like to have something moving so quickly, because oftentimes you think funeral and you think that scene is going to be this like reflective kind of moment. And, you know, it's all about the past and who they were. And then but having it fire away like that, where who are these people that are still breathing and are living with this right in front of them? So I would be most interested in like the physicality of it all and understanding that business. Roman? What I think you- I, for me, the biggest part, the biggest thing I'd be excited for is one of the hardest things to do on Zoom, in addition to physicality, is speed and tempo because of the lag. So I think that's one of the fun things about comedy and especially about this piece in particular is there, you know, the tempo switch so beautifully and it would be fun to play around with uh, finding that the, almost like the melody of the, of the soundtrack of this scene. 
Um, absolutely, absolutely. Daryl? Um, I, I think if I was working, I, I, I'd love to, you know, I'm, I'm very impressed by funeral directors because they always have to have this facade of, you know, being in control when everything is crazy and funerals usually are, or, you know, people are, are insane at these things. So I'd love to work on, you know, putting up that, you know, working on putting that wall while on the inside, I'm just screaming about, yeah. Yeah. About yeah, that faith. <laughs> yeah. Slightly involved. Faith, you know? Yeah. This is exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was just, that was just fantastic. All of you. What, what wonderful work. Uh, oh, Sean, just, just a couple words. What would, what would be your next step? What's the next step here for you? Well, I, I also love the physicality. Um, I, I do think, um, working, c combining the, 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 the physicality work with the speed, you know, just what, what these guys are talking about, but, um, seeing how long do we need, uh, those, those space, how long can we leave the space and how, how, what the tempo is in the musicality to earn the, earn that space within the script. Um, but also slowly getting on its feet, because like Kalani said, the, the emotional level would just go skyrocket even higher with the, the physicality of the father right there and what they have to do. So that'll bring out a whole other aspect of it. Yeah. And Lee, we know we'll get you busy thinking about the full length version. Yeah. I think I'd like to meet their moms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they've got, they've got a couple of different ones, you know, yeah. and, who have been in competition from, from the beginning. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> oh, they can have a scene with the, with the father after, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you all so much uh, for tuning in. I'm just so grateful to all of you for being in this. It was just such an honor to have you here and have this wonderful acting and directing and playwriting all in one place. Just I'm so grateful to you for doing that. And thank you all of you who tuned in at home. We had uh, over 300 of you, which is a full house at our theater. So we'll call it an evening of success. And uh, those of you I'd like to particularly thank who, uh, who, who, when they bought their free ticket, uh, actually made a donation to go along with it because we are paying all the participants in all of these Zoomlets. And so your help uh, contributing keeps the San Francisco Playhouse going too through this difficult, difficult year. And, and for those of you uh, who didn't make a donation, you'll be receiving a thank you email uh, tomorrow and and you'll get another opportunity to contribute so i hope you'll take that opportunity seriously and contribute to our wonderful uh series of indigenous plays and to our zoomlet series in general next year we're going to give a, a a playwright who who hasn't had a lot of exposure these days a chance we're actually going to work on oedipus rex by sophocles next week uh, We've been doing a series with uh, Carrie Perloff, the former artistic director at ACT. We called uh, Classics Reclassified, which means we kind of try to take another look at a classic play. Instead of just doing a, a, a whole short play, we do a little teeny piece of a big play. I know when I first started working on these, I thought I was never going to find enough really, really wonderful short plays. And that turned out to totally not be the case. But we also got into this idea of maybe doing a, a very, very difficult scene. And uh, we're going to do uh, the beginning, the very first scene from Oedipus Rex. But in a little like switching, switching actors into roles, we're going to work with two different translations, uh, which should be very interesting as, as the Greek has been translated into English by a, a couple of, of different people. So we're excited about that. We're also excited for the, to be entering the first day of a Black History Month. And uh, we're going to be doing a couple of things uh, coming up. We're going to do a, a, a wonderful a Zoomlet coming up soon. Um, Give Her God is the name of it. And then we're going to start rehearsals for a, a wonderful, wonderful play that we're going to be putting up at the very beginning of March. And it's called Hieroglyph by Erica Dickerson Dispenza that will be directed by Margot Hall, a legendary Margot Hall of San Francisco. So we hope you will all tune in for these upcoming opportunities in the Zoomlets and in our act two of our 2021 season. Once again, thank you so much uh, for being with us tonight. 
and we'll see you next week.